and drooling now. One really cool thing you might not expect here in Brussels is this is our third place that we are trying because they haven't been very good. You know I don't like beers. So Here's a tip I bet you didn't know that will make your trip even better and give you a very unique experience. Hey travel lovers, welcome to A Wanderlust for Life. I'm Jessica and this is the channel that shows you European gems through food and memorable experiences. And we are in Brussels and we're gonna show you all the things you need to eat in this amazing city. Let's go. Brussels, you have got to have chocolate, and that is why we are here at Chocolatier Mary of all the chocolate shops in the city because it has been making chocolate since 1919. They are the official chocolatiers of the royal family, and I believe it was the first woman chocolatier. For the best biscuits in Brussels, also known as cookies for us Americans, you have to go to Maison d'Endois. It has been in the family and started in 1829, so you know it's gotta be good if it's been around for that long. So they have shortbread cookies, they have the thin little crispy cookies that you saw us have in Antwerp and of course you have to get the speculos so that is what we are gonna get. We are standing in one of the most iconic parts of Brussels. We are here in Grand Place or Grootmarkt in Dutch and this square is one of the most grand I think I've ever seen. So this started to be built in the 11th century but was actually mostly destroyed in 1695. It was then actually very quickly built again after that and you have gold, you have just like different kinds of architecture. It's so beautiful and grand. We accidentally came on Jazz Weekend which has been pretty amazing. This is such a cool spot just to kind of take it all in and be in awe of the power of the city, the, the beauty of the city, and just the grandeur of the city. This is your reminder to subscribe, but also to not just listen to us <laughs> and go exploring on your own. Like we have a list of things to show you in this video and we walked by this place that looks amazing and found something new. So this is Vergeois uh, waffle. So it reminds us of a stroke waffle in the Netherlands, but it has different things inside. So we got a vanilla and we got one sugar, butter, and rum. Let's give this a try. I have no idea really what to expect. She said it's very French, but I think that's the cool thing about Brussels and Belgium in general is it's kind of part French and part Dutch and things seep through. So I think this is a perfect example of that. Rummy. It is sweet. So it's uh, butter, sugar, and then rum. So it is quite sweet, but it's not overly sweet. And no, it's, it's a very nice uh, sweet snack, but not sickening sweet. You have to come to the Royal Gallery, St. Hubert, here in Brussels because it is stunning. This is one of the oldest galleries in the world. And when I say gallery, I mean like shopping arcade. So there are shops on either side. It's covered. You can see all the natural light coming in. So beautiful. And it is like 100 meters in each of the major sections. So there's the King's Gallery, Queen's Gallery, and there's a smaller one. And it's the Prince's Gallery. I'm noticing the shops here are a lot of chocolate shops, some cafes, some jewelry, stuff like that. So window shopping or shop for some chocolates to take home. Obviously you have to get waffles when you're here in Brussels. This is a Liège waffle, so there are two different kinds, Liège and Brussels. I believe if I remember correctly that the Liège is actually more popular in Brussels with the locals. So it's more of a thick dough. It has like the crystals inside and everything. We've tried another place that we really love with cinnamon. Um, this place is close to our hotel and it is an operation. There's always a line. So we got Speculose Cinnamon. I'm gonna get this to try because I'm so curious. If you don't know what Speculose is, it's kind of like a gingerbread -y kind of vibe. Um, it's very popular here in the Netherlands, Belgium, things like that. Mm. Kind of ooey gooey, we got this one literally fresh off of the iron, so it's nice and warm and hot. Warm and hot. Uh, yeah, so you can actually see a little bit of the speculos, I think, inside. It's quite good, but I'm also gonna leave the blog post down below with um, our other favorite spots so that you can check it out too. We 
you've done the Liège waffle, now you have got to do the Brussels waffle. And I will be completely honest with you, this is our third place that we are trying because they haven't been very good. So I am still in the search for the best one to share with you. And this is Los Churros and Waffles. And I'm really excited. So Brussels waffles are thinner and lighter than Liège waffles. They are uh, made from a batter, usually warmed up when you get here, and traditionally just pop some powdered sugar on it, or maybe strawberries or banana, whatever you like. And they're very squarish, <laughs> instead of like the Liège, where it's very organic shaped. Let's see how this one goes. I do kind of wish we got whipped cream, <laughs> because I like the texture, the difference in the um, hot and cool and stuff. But this is a waffle. This is what a waffle should taste like. Now, nothing compares to the one we had in Antwerp. If you have not seen that video, I will leave that linked above because that was the best Brussels waffle I've ever had. Maybe the best waffle in general. But I can confirm, Os Churros and Waffle is a good place to get a proper Brussels waffle. If you want to see all the fails that happened on this trip, <laughs> join Patreon because I'm going to put a video together because there's been a couple and I will leave the link up there or down below so that you can join if you want to support the channel and get extra videos. We wanted to show you the difference between the Brussels and Liège waffle close up. So uh, we are here at a very expensive place and apparently locals are kind of mad that it's gotten so expensive because it's very touristy. But we wanted to kind of just show you and have a good one to present to you. You can see this is a little bit more organic shaped and roundish. Lots of butter going in there, usually crispy bits of sugar. Whereas the Brussels waffle is very square and very light. Like this just the weight itself is very heavy and covered in powdered sugar, but it's very fluffy. We're gonna give this one a try and see if it's any better than the one we just had. And I can really recommend which one to suggest. But keep in mind, this was 570. I think the other one was 390, if I remember correctly. So let's see if it's worth all that extra dough. I laughed, Sean didn't laugh. So the other thing to note is this was made very fresh, so we saw them making it, whereas the other ones are all kind of pre-made and just heated up, as, as far as the Brussels waffles go. So different. This kind of reminds me of the one we had in Antwerp, the one that I really like. I don't know if it's the case, but it does taste like sourdough-ish. There's definitely a flavor there. It's, it's not as um, fluffy on the inside like it is, but it's still very firm, whereas I kind of like it a little bit more squishy. Here at Le Bistro, we are actually overlooking an old city gate, which is pretty amazing. We have the best seat in the house. I'm not sure how we did that, but yeah, yes. I am having a very traditional Flemish stew, also called souffles in Dutch, and it's also called carbonade in French. And it is basically beef stewed in its own juices, plus beer, and usually served with fries, of course. So it's very much like a, a pot roast type thing. It's warm and delicious and we're gonna dig in. One really cool thing you might not expect here in Brussels is the street art and also comic strip art. They even have a comic strip museum here but just always be looking up, looking around corners and you can see some really colorful things. The fish behind me is one of my favorites because it's just so colorful but you'll just find these everywhere. I love the, the contrast of the colorful and new and the really old. But in Brussels, obviously, you have to have some beer. So we are at Brussels Beer Project and they create different flavors. You can come in here and try the different flavors, get a flight, check out the tap room behind me. You know I don't like beer, so I got um, what is called the Tropical Sour, which is lychee and other fruit, fruity flavors. And we also have Jungle Joy, which is passion fruit and mango. So I'm gonna try to enjoy this. Um, I've tasted them already. They let you taste a little bit to make sure that you know what you're getting and that you like it. It's just a really cool space. It's outside the old city center, so it's also good to kind of get out of that area. Just cool space, really cool. Of course we're gonna get fries. And we are at one of the favorites, at least in the city center at Freetland, and they look crispy and crunchy. Hopefully it's pillowy on the inside. So if you don't know, Belgian fries are kind of special. We call them French fries, but Flemish fries is what it really means. And they are fried a couple different times and that makes it super fluffy on the inside and crunchy on the outside. And of course we got it with mayo. This place has a line literally around the corner. So I think it's gonna be pretty good. Okay, we've tried a couple different fry places. 
I'm drooling now. And some dude's looking at me funny. Uh, <laughs> who else was there that? We actually filmed this whole thing already once and the fries tasted like Burger King fries. I like these ones. Maybe a little more salt. This is, I can confirm, a pretty good place to go. We are here at the very famous mannequin piss statue and fountain here in Brussels. And he is very, very tiny. I think he's a lot smaller than you would think he is. But I cannot be the only person on this planet that thinks it's weird that we have fountains of peeing kids, right? There's also a one of a female, and it is down the street a little bit, a couple blocks away. Um, she is actually protected behind a gate because she was vandalized too much. There's also a peeing dog statue. It's peeing on a little stanchion. <laughs> Lots of peeing statues in the city. So if you're interested in this guy, he is usually clothed. He's not today. Um, there is a museum where you get to see the original statue because this is a replica and all of his outfits, which I think is super cool. Here's a tip I bet you didn't know that will make your trip even better and give you a very unique experience. And that is to check with the International Greeters Association to see if there's a greeter available in the city that you are going to. So they give tours around the city that you are traveling to. They are locals and they're volunteers. They don't accept any money. And what you do is you contact them ahead of time and let them know kind of what you're interested in and they'll pair you up with the greeter. And then you just meet up and have an amazing time. We did that when we came here to Brussels and we've done that before and it's always an amazing experience and you get super local information. For our final meal here in Brussels, we have mussels from Brussels because you have to do that. We are at La Zenica, I believe is how you say it. Um, it is not in the city center, but it is actually listed in like the top 500 experiences in the world that you should have as far as food experiences, which I didn't even know about. It was just a recommendation. So we have mussels and fries. That is just such a typical thing to have here. There are 69 different options of mussels in this place and the people are so, so nice. I already recommend it, but I'm gonna give the muscles a try. I learned this, like, I think, I don't know when, but you pick it out with the one. Oh, I got um, bacon, cream, gin, and herbs in mine. So that's the flavor that I ended up getting. That is extremely good. We also got um, uh, Indonesian kind, but there are so many different kinds to get. You can't really. <laughs> I can't really go wrong as I break my shell. That was a delicious video. If you have a spot of the foods that we tried in this video, please let me know down in the comments below because we will definitely be back. And if we missed any foods, you have to tell me because I'm sure we missed something. But it was just so nice to be in Brussels and to try everything, to meet our greeter, and we just had a really good time. So thank you, Brussels, for being amazing. If you like this video, please give it a like. Comment down below which your favorite food was or what you'd love to try when you're here. And we will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.